I did a three-year painting degree at Winchester School of Art and I think towards the end of that I realised that I wanted to paint because it was painters that made me want to be an artist. Um, and I kind of grew up with like works of like Freud and Rembrandt stuck on the walls in my bedroom and they made me want to make work and express myself in that way but I wasn't a painter and I wasn't getting any joy from making work like that. Um, and so I went back to drawing, which had always been a really strong undercurrent. And I did a master's in drawing and I did another postgrad at the Royal Drawing School. Um, and I chose to work in pen because I think for me, in order to kind of be serious and focus on what I'm doing, um, I like the permanency of pen. I like the fact that you can't take back what the marks that you make and you have to focus on everything as you go. And, and then it becomes much more immersive and less flippant. I'm in the same in the same way I don't I don't refer to any of my works as sketches. Everything's a drawing and everything's on loose leaf paper and I treat them each as if they might be something. Even, you know, sometimes work might not work out, but that's why for me pen is important. I, I always felt at art college I had to say that artists were my biggest influence and that I liked this painter or that painter and that was always the first question in any assessment, you know, which painters influence you? Which right which which artists are you most inspired by? Um, I think always for me it's been the work of writers, it's been the work of people who walk and write and express themselves in landscape, writers like Robert McFarlane, Nan Shepherd, Tim D, Kathleen Jamie, J.A. Baker, people who found solace in the land um, and J.A. Baker writes that everything he saw happened while he was watching it but the experience and thoughts of the watcher must also be expressed and I think that works for drawing as well that everything I saw happened while I was watching it, but also my feeling of mood or my feeling of this is unnecessary to express that when I'm putting things down and editing, that's important as well. For me, uh, drawing landscape is not about kind of approaching a, a view or a vista or something idyllic, it's about looking for something, an undercurrent, something strange, something odd, something jarring. And it's always going to be what's jarring or odd or strange to me. And I think that's the important part is that you're sort of turning a mirror around to the people who inhabit that landscape um, and pointing out the things that you find different and unusual and making a drawing out of them is a really great way of doing that. You're putting a line around something, you're making something permanent of what is bizarre or different. It, it, I think it emphasises it more than perhaps a photograph does because um, you've taken the time to do it. You, you notice a strange structure like a boar hide in the wood or you notice which to them looks great and normal or a rabbit hutch in a tree which to them is just a hunting mechanism and to you is like there's a rabbit hutch in the tree um, and drawing drawing it in, in landscape is I think is how is a great way for me to do that to emphasize those things. I think experiencing Guernsey was really different to other residencies I've done in that I was left on my own after a tour of the island I was then left on my own to decide what to do and I was living on my own for a couple of weeks with a bike and a drawing board strapped to the back and I could cycle around and just return to things that I'd noticed and I don't like talking about when I'm before I've made anything what I'm going to make or what is interesting because I think that kind of kills it because you've already explained it so why express it on paper so you're just sort of holding those things cycling around picking up on them again and noticing uh, those peculiarities and those differences again. So for me it was where the forts and the rocks and you merge and you can't tell the difference between what has been built and what is natural. And then going, going around to these idyllic, beautiful white sandy beaches that have these huge hulking German concrete structures in them that are like, like massive scars across the landscape. And, People are having, you know, getting on with their day and they're used to it. And it's again that idea of kind of turning a mirror to them and going, it is, it is strange and it is peculiar, but that's what makes it specific to there. And I think that's those things that I try to notice. I don't have a plan when I start a drawing. I'll, I'll cut a piece of paper in a kind of vague hope that that will, that'll be all right. But then that's um, why nothing is a set size. Everything is an odd size and I end up ripping chunks off and adding chunks on and the large pieces I tend to try and overestimate what I might be able to do so that I'll only be taking off but there, there's always drawings that have strips of paper added on and sections in, taken added later because you do, it's best not to plan I think. I think if, a, if I plan and then what I'm doing feels like paint by numbers and I'd rather it just happen and then I adjust. I, I keep returning to Orford Ness in Suffolk. It's a really important place for me in my practice. Um, 
I, I, we lived, I lived in Suffolk for a while with my family and they lived very close to Orford Ness and you can see it from the hill and it's an abandoned atomic weapons testing site. Um, and I just keep coming back to it in my drawing, sometimes from photography, sometimes I'll go back and see it again. And it's a place that sort of, yeah, it's wasting away. It's, they're on their sort of, they've just abandoned the lighthouse now there for good. It's, it's too dangerous to stay and it will eventually fall into the sea. The buildings themselves are owned by the National Trust, but one of the only properties they own that they're not preserving. The buildings have been, are being left to fall apart. And no one really knows what, exactly what any of the buildings were for. They were just given a map. There's some, there's, it's so alien and strange, and it's, but it's also leaving. It's almost like those questions will never be answered. So drawing and documenting what's there and being with it as it goes, it just feels really important to me. It feels, it feels like sort of holding someone's hand as they, as they, as they go. And it's, knowing that I, I saw, that I was there, that I witnessed, and that's important. <laughs>